how are you enjoying spring training? Uh, it's been great, guys. Unseasonably cold out in the desert, I can tell you that. So coming back from Arizona, I'm glad that you know we're we're getting things ro- uh, moving in the right direction. But man, it is crazy to see these rule changes now and and how quickly guys have either adapted to it or are still getting that onboarding process. Okay, so as a guy, again, who pitched in the league, and you were a quick worker, but I want to give you a couple of things that players have said. Max Scherzer, he thinks the pitchers have the edge. He said that right away. Spencer Strider said, generally speaking, it will uh, it, it, uh, the pitchers are going to have the advantage more often. We can control the tempo. But his teammate, Matt Olson, disagreed and said, I think for pitchers it will be a bigger transition they may have to take a ball violation or just throw a pitch at the last second. 15-second shot clock, basically, when nobody's on base. 20 seconds when there is a runner on base. Who do you think has the edge? Yeah, I could see, honestly, Mitch, maybe later in games for starters, fatigue being an issue. And knowing that you know these first couple of weeks of spring training, you're only having those starters go to maybe three innings. So as far as their training regiments are concerned, it's going to quicken the pitch-to-pitch you know, timeline of where they've got to be ready. They've got to have their thoughts all set. And then they've got to physically go ahead and deliver the pitch accurately. So I'm fascinated to see as we move into maybe those summer months and and which guys are physically fit enough to get into that fifth, sixth, seventh inning and still maintain that pace and tempo. I think it may catch some of those guys that may not be as physically fit early on. You might see some of those pitches not being delivered in those spots because of what the pitch clock is forcing them to do. Okay, one more then with the uh, the pitcher and the catcher combo, the battery here. Pitchcom is now available to communicate both ways between the two. But if a player clicks the wrong button for a pitch, time could become a factor. This was from Lucas Giolito from the White Sox. He said, quote, I had to shake myself off a couple <laughs> of times. And he was laughing was just getting used to the buttons and uh, where everything is. I accidentally called a pickoff with no one on base during a live batting practice session. It's phenomenal. Uh, My buddy Zach Greinke, too, I thought was hilarious when he was calling pitches himself and he was shaking himself off. Uh, You know, just one of those things that you look at in modern technology. I know Max Scherzer has been a guy that has really loved it and has been able to play with it. I think from a tempo perspective, guys, when you feel like you've got you know, the ability to, to literally start calling your game as soon as you get the ball back from the catcher. You know, you can kind of exchange ideas without that clock really starting for a couple of seconds. So, again, as with most of these rule changes, guys will start to get into habits. They'll start to get comfortable with it. Perfect time to work on all those things and work out the kinks in spring training. You saw an increase in the minor leagues when they added this. How about you can only throw over to first base twice per, per appearance? What does this mean for pitchers? And, and you got to get stolen bases now. They have to take advantage of this. And is there? Can you find a prop? Could you get creative here? Make some money with a guy who could steal a lot of bases with the new rule? Yeah, I think you might have some unlikely suspects here, Paulie, as far as those that could challenge for most stolen bases in the league this year. But it'll be the strategy, and I think more so late game of you know left-handed relievers that come in and know that if you're in a tight game and guys are trying to get into scoring position. When do you throw over? Do you use that pitch clock like an NBA shot clock where you take it all the way down, try and get that runner kind of stuck in his tracks right there? And then also, I think you're going to see an uptick in catchers after the pitch is delivered, throwing down to first base. One, to try and get a a free out right there, but also to give their pitcher maybe a little bit of time to collect himself. So again, these competitive advantage things that you see as we move forward in spring training, and I think as we get into the regular season, those first couple of months, a lot of teams will be taking notes of what works and then trying to create those edges, especially late in the season. Are you happy the shift is gone? Guys, I might still be playing with all the uh, two out runs that I gave up with the, you know, <laughs> with the shift that happened. So I, I, I like it a lot for the left-handed hitters. I know in Cleveland, we watched Jose Ramirez hit so many bullets into short right field and end up having outs there. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really intrigued to see how not only these teams go about, we saw the Red Sox do it already, bringing the outfielder over and basically giving up left field altogether. When is that strategy deployed and how often do you do it? I, I still think we'll see some teams get creative there, but yeah, for me individually, I'm, I'm thrilled to see a little bit more offense. I heard a really good point from Adam Burke, who is really good on baseball. He's here at VEASAN. He brought up, with no shift now, Jensen, uh, pay attention to ground ball pitchers. Because if that's going to be a limit, right, if they're heavy into inducing ground balls, well, now all of a sudden there's no shift. 
And suddenly those outs are going to turn into, oh, look at that. See, nice single. Oh, oh, there's another one down the left field line, whatever, or right field line. That might be something to absolutely have in your handicapping early on in the season. Yeah, and I, and I think also from run totals, guys, especially in the first five, you know, you think about starters that are more contact oriented and obviously don't have the swing and miss stuff, you know, that first, second time around. Man, a lot of those overs in the first five could become really enticing. So uh, interested to see if infielders, especially up the middle, shade into the hole a little bit more. If they're willing to give up the middle of the diamond, even though the pitcher right there being closest to the plate, I think that's a great point right there to kind of get those first three to four starts around to see those guys, especially in the cold weather climates too. If those seeing eye singles get through, you could see some run totals tick up a bit as well. Sure, and I will point this out, uh, players. This is through fe- this is through like late last week. They were hitting 272 with an average of 11.9 runs per game. That's up from a batting average of 259 and 10.6 runs through the same time frame in 2022. So just for what it's worth in spring training games, same time frame here. Runs are up 1.3 per game and batting average up 13 points. And, and fabulous to go along with that, guys. The average game time is down, what, about 20, 25 minutes? Yes. So it's great to see more offense, but having it occur in a shorter amount of time as well. Yeah, well said. Where's Otani next year? But, okay, so the smart money would say that Steve Cohen's not going to get outbid and the Dodgers not getting a major acquisition this past offseason, you know, letting Turner go and and not spending a boatload of money. You would think that Andrew Friedman and company would be in there. You know, I, Artie Moreno not selling the club is a little bit of a, whoa, you know, are, are you really going to try and do this? To me, if he was going to be an angel, he would have already signed. They would have already offered him, you know, the $500 oh. million or the $50 million AAV already. So. I'm going to remove the Angels from from the conversation. I think it's Dodgers, Mets, and then there might be a dark horse in there somewhere. Maybe the Giants try and go all in and and really create a splash. But to me, it just feels like if it's not the Mets, he stays on the West Coast there, either in the American League or the National League. Does does he finish the 2023 season in an Angels uniform? That's a that's a great question. And oh. I I look at the Angels win total, and I'm thinking I like the over. But at the same time, it's 81, 83, yep. so that's still not getting you to the postseason. You would have to be overwhelmed, Mitch, with a, with and a, and, a, and a package we've never seen before at the trade deadline because of how impact. You're not trading for one player. You're trading for two players mm-hmm. with one person. So yeah. I think it will be fascinating. I'll say yes at the moment because I think the Angels can hang in there. I like their pitching a little bit better. So I'll say, yeah, I think he stays at the deadline. Visit VEASAN.com to get current odds. Listen for free, find showtimes, and download VEASAN's sports betting podcasts.